Well, hey friends and neighbors, this is Chuck out at Sheraton Park Farms. Welcome back to the farm. So today, um, we've had a delivery of some hay. So we gotta get that in the barn. But stick around, I wanna talk to you why I think that buying hay is probably a better option than making your own hay, and why I think making your own hay is maybe a little bit of a scam. Hang out and I'll tell you why. So while we were going to the market yesterday, the hay fairy came. Well, not the actual hay fairy, but a guy that has some hay in a dump truck. And we bought, so we bought 50 rolls of hay. This is 40. Um, and we weren't here to help unload, so I told him, I said, just put it out here in the pasture and then I'll move it because we got to do a little bit of straightening it up, cleaning it up, and getting the spot ready. But this is uh, 40 rolls of hay from local right here uh, close to us. Looks like it's pretty good stuff. Main reason that we got this, one of the main reasons that we got this, this is from a farm that uses no uh, chemical fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides, none of that kind of stuff. It's it's unsprayed hay. And it looks pretty good. Four by four rolls. We'd like to have four by five, but uh, this is going to work out just fine. We're going to get some more later in the year, but this will get us started uh, on a good stock to put back for winter. And we get questions all the time. Why don't you make your own hay? Well, Hang around the end, I'll go over why we don't. We'll talk a little bit about the economics of why we don't primarily, um, and a couple other reasons. So, but for now, let's work on getting uh, let's work on getting this stuff in the barn, getting it stacked up. Before all of you haystacking Jenga masters uh, decide you want to jump in here, um, is it the most efficient use of space? Nope. Uh, does it look nice? <laughs> Not even close. But it's 40 rolls of hay in the barn, in the dry. That'll help us get through the winter. So 10 more rolls to go. Uh, we got the guy that's supposed to bring us another delivery probably one day later this week. Got some rain coming in, so we'll probably wait till we've got a dry day. 10 more rolls coming. That'll give us 50. Good start. We'll probably end up buying some more later on in the season so that we've got plenty to get us through the winter. All right, there it is. 50 rolls of hay in the barn, in the dry, to get us through the winter and any um, adverse event that we may run into, drought, we're not growing grass, whatever the case may be. This is an insurance policy. We've got hay in the barn, we can feed animals. So I know the title of this probably irritated some people, might have, might have ticked some people off, but let me explain uh, my theory on making hay and why I think it's a scam for me, maybe not for you. 50 rolls of hay in the barn. Here locally, Western North Carolina, Hay this year is running about $40 a roll. And we're talking rolled hay, we're not talking square bales. About $40 a roll. Now, if you get it delivered, you're probably gonna pay a little bit more. We did have this delivered, but I'm gonna use $40 as our baseline cost on a single roll of hay. So $40 a roll, keep that in mind. Now, 
We don't have any haymaking equipment here on our farm. I've got the tractor, we've got a new Holland, which would be perfect to make hay with, uh, but that's all I've got. So I got to thinking, what would it cost us to start making hay? What would that involve? How much would it cost time, fuel, the whole deal? So here's what I came up with. Started doing a cursory look today on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, some other local buy-sell groups. First off, you're gonna to have to buy a mower. Now I was looking at disc mowers, wasn't looking at sickle bar mowers. They can be a little bit finicky um, and they can be a little difficult to use if conditions aren't right. So I'm looking at disc mowers. They're all over the place. Mower's gonna cost you between $800 and $8,000. So let's just take the average cost there, $4,400 to buy you a mower. You're gonna have to have a rake to rake it into windrows so you can come along and bail it. Rakes, same thing anywhere between $500 and $7,000. Now I'm looking at used equipment. I'm not looking new. This is all used equipment. Anywhere between $500 and $7,000 for a rake, average $37.50. And then you gotta buy a baler. Now that's gonna be your most expensive piece of equipment that you're gonna have to buy. Baler, anywhere between $1,500 and $15,000. $7,000 is gonna be the average. So you add all that up, you're looking at $15,150 for haymaking equipment. Let's just say that I'm a good negotiator and I can buy stuff a little bit cheaper. Let's use $14,000 as our baseline cost for haymaking equipment, $14,000. Now, one cutting of hay, let's say it takes me two days to do a cutting of hay. I think I'm being optimistic there. And this is just me by myself, no help. 15, uh, two days. So 30 bucks an hour, because I work cheap, 30 bucks an hour, 16 hours would be $480 in labor just on cutting hay. And mowing it, baling it, putting it in the barn. Fuel, we're gonna have to spend some money on fuel. Let's say the tractor's got a 10 gallon tank on it, we run two tanks through, I bought it at $3 a gallon for ease of figuring, so we're gonna run $60 of fuel worth the track, $60 worth of fuel through the tractor to cut, bale, and move the hay into the barn. So, equipment costs, labor, and fuel. First cutting of hay, it's gonna cost me $14,540. Now, if we take that $40 a roll purchase price into consideration, I could buy 364 rolls of hay for the same amount of money it would cost me to cut, bail, buy the equipment, spend the labor, spend the fuel to get that same amount of hay. I could buy 364 rolls. Now, there's a couple of compounding factors that, that really are gonna push that number the other way and make it even more expensive. First off, I don't have the land to do it on. The way we, we rotationally graze and move animals around here, I don't have the acreage to set aside to cut, bail, and put that hay up because we're all, we always have animals running across just about all the farms. So it would be difficult to stop grazing on an area to let it grow, to cut, and put hay up. So we don't have the land to do it. Well, I'm not gonna go buy land just to cut hay off of. That would be, heck, now the cost goes way through the roof. There are folks around here in this area that will let you come and cut their fields, but they want half of the hay. They want half the hay crop off of it. So let's just say that somebody lets us come in and cut a field we get 100 rolls of hay off of it, I'm only gonna get 50 of those. I'm only, go, only gonna get half of it. So to make this number even work, now I'm gonna have to cut twice as much hay to get that 364 rolls. I'm gonna have to cut over 700 rolls of hay just to get 364 out of it. So it becomes even more expensive. Now, a couple other things, time. I just don't have the time to do it. Um, we've got a lot going on here. We're feeding animals, we're moving animals. I still have an off-farm job. You have to time, your timing has to be just right for hay because of weather and, and rain and watching that kind of thing. We just don't have the time to dedicate to doing it. So time becomes a major factor. I don't have a trailer to haul the hay. I don't have a trailer to haul the equipment. I've got that dump trailer. I can haul four rolls on it at a time and roll on the truck. And I don't, I don't have a trailer to haul the equipment to another farm to cut the hay. So I'm not even counting a trailer, but we don't have a trailer to go get the hay or take the equipment to it. Repairs and maintenance. 100 rolls of hay will last me a year and a half. 
so we can get by, you know, about 75 rolls a year. I think we fed, you know, maybe 50 days this year, 60 days. Um, so 364 rolls of hay would last me four or five years. Well, I'm gonna have to cut 700 rolls. Well, over the course of 700 rolls, because I'm splitting it with the landowner, there's gonna be repairs and maintenance that's gonna to have to be done to that equipment. Things are gonna break, um, tires are gonna get busted, you're gonna to have to buy more twine, fill in the blank on what potentially could go wrong. You're gonna catch a limb and break some, I don't know what all could go wrong with this stuff. But you're gonna to have to have um, some money set aside for repairs and maintenance. So now your cost is going even higher. And then finally, if you're, if you're leasing or borrowing or splitting um, the hay crop with another landowner, they're gonna want you to help with fertilizer, weed control and that kind of thing. So there's gonna be an additional cost, additional labor, additional time. So for us, buying hay equipment and cutting our own hay just does not make any sense. Now for you, it may, and this is all contextual. Please don't say nobody should be cutting hay. We're glad, we're tickled to death for the folks that do this. We're glad to help them pay for their equipment by buying hay from them, paying for their land costs, whatever the case may be. But for us in our context, it just doesn't make sense. We talk about Pete, you know, Pete likes to cut hay, make hay. He's got the equipment, he's got the land, perfect. It makes sense in his context. Uh, my friend Evan over at Country View Acres, um, Evan is a super handy guy, he can fix anything. So he can buy cheaper equipment, maybe that needs more repairs, I can't fix, I can't fix a thing. Um, so he may be able to buy that equipment cheaper and it may make more sense for him to buy the equipment and cut the hay on his farm. So it's all in context, but um, you don't have to be cutting hay and making hay to be a farmer. Um, and for us to go buy the equipment to make hay, just to claim that we cut hay and make hay and put hay up is a little bit of a scam. And it just doesn't make sense for us. So, don't expect to see any hay cutting videos or baling hay videos or anything on this, uh, on this YouTube channel anytime in the near future. But, like we always say, please keep us in your prayers. May God bless you and your families. And we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.